Hello everybody and welcome to another video. I apologize for starting the video a few seconds late. I uh, kind of just lost my mind for a minute. Anyways, this is number two and this is number two of two of these extra large uh, canvas panels. Just like the last one I did, this is a 24 by 36. Something I wanted to try new. I've never done anything anywhere near this big before. It was always a little bit intimidating and my comfort zone is 12 by 16. Although you have seen in the past, I've done some 16 by 20 and rarely 18 by 24. So this 24 by 36 is uh, a whole new experience. Now this one, I wanted to use mainly a palette knife. I do use a brush in here at times just to kind of smooth it out a little bit and uh, in a couple areas, but mainly 99.9% .9 of this painting is gonna be with the palette knife. It's gonna be a real impressionistic uh, painting and it's gonna be of a waterfall. You can see I got a kind of a sketch out here. Um, when I sketch, I don't have it really precise. I like to just get a general idea of what I'm doing, and then from there, you know, kind of improvise. And what it, that does, for me anyways, it really helps because I don't like even trying to copy something. So if I see something online or a picture, I'll get a general idea of something. And then once I have the general idea, then I'll kind of make it my own and, you know, change it up and things like that. And even if I take pictures, you know, at the forest preserves or if I'm on vacation or whatever, I still don't like to make anything um, exact. So at this point in time, this is just a basic sketch idea. And then from there, I'm kind of just let it do its own thing. So as you can see here, I've got a couple of colors in here for my sky. I don't like skies just blue with white clouds only. I like to kind of marble them, especially when I'm doing uh, a knife. And I'm putting the paint on relatively thick, because it is with a knife. And I am going to wipe a lot of it off. Now one of the things that's really cool about when you're painting in oils is if you use a decent amount of white, which I'm doing here, it's uh, very opaque. So when you scrape it off or wipe it off, there's still going to be a lot of color covering the canvas panel. And this, like I told you, the 24 by 36. It's an ampersand uh, gesso board, which is my favorite surface uh, to paint on. That has really uh, been no doubt. This, however, is an inch and a half um, cradle. I usually do the uh, 1 8 inch panels from uh, ampersand, but this one and the last one and then a couple of... Um, what did I buy? I bought a five pack because they were on sale of uh, the 18 by 24s, which will be next. And those are all at an inch and a half cradle. So I want to kind of see how those um, go at my next show, which is the end of August. So I want to get all seven of these new ones done and see if people like these better or if they like the uh, eighth inch profile better. The show is in uh, Chicago. It's in uh, Bucktown and it's the last weekend of August. So I got plenty of time to have these uh, dry. Okay, so you saw I was scraping with the knife to get a lot of the bulky stuff off. And you're gonna see throughout this, uh, I can't really hide per se, uh, because it's such a big format, I have to have the camera back a little bit. So you're gonna see me use going through a lot of paper towels. Okay, now here I'm trying to get an idea where I'm at with my sky. It's uh, nowhere near gonna be done but I'm just trying to smooth it out as best I can with the knife, see where I'm at. And then I'm even using a little spoon knife to see um, if I can get different effects and things like that. I've got several different knives and I like to experiment. I'm known by, uh, by no means, you know, an expert and master knife painter, but um, I do um, like to use different size blades and shape blades to see what kind of effects I can get. So, and then also, one of the things I'm doing, just since it is an inch and a half profile, I like to not have bulky paint on the sides. I will paint those when the uh, painting is dry. I'll paint them a nice uh, deep black with acrylic paint on the edges. But in the meantime, to help that, I don't like uh, paint to build up, so I'll scrape it off as I go. Okay, now here I'm going to put in some clouds, and I'm also going to put in a few shadows with some Payne's Gray in a little bit. There you go. And then I'm going to also 
blend these out with the brush. I'm not going to like what it looks like, and then I'm going to wipe it off with a shop towel. And that's one of the beauties of oil paint. It doesn't dry so quick, so if it's something you don't like, you can wipe it off. And you're not going to go right down to the bare surface again like it was nothing. But you can get the bulk paint off and then not start over completely, but have a really good uh, starting point. And then you can improvise. One of the things I do love about a painting knife is you do get a lot of great effects. And you don't always get exactly what you want. Sometimes it's hard to control, but it is a lot of fun. It uh, can be a little frustrating when you're trying to get you know a particular look and it's just not cooperating. But I think that just comes with time and practice. Right now, I've gotten to the point where, you know, I'm not too bad, other than hitting the camera like I just did, going back and forth. And then um, trying to stay out of the way as best I can for you. Not always the easiest thing in the world to do. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out how much I like or hate this guy. And to be quite honest, I actually hate this guy. I had something in mind when I started this, and... For whatever reason, it just didn't work. So, I'm going to try and blend it out. Got my three-inch brush here. I'm going to see if blending it out is going to help. And I'm going to find out that, no, it's not. It's going to still look like garbage. But there are times when the blending of a brush will help. You're going to get a little smoother look than you will with a knife, for obvious reasons. But it's still not going to work. I've got too much stuff going on, so I tried a different one there with a the little stiffer bristles. That's not going to work either. I don't know if you can tell the frustrated look on my face, like, are you kidding me? I spent 20 minutes on this thing and it still looks like garbage. It's like, no, no, no. One of the things that is a challenge, too, is I'm so used to the smaller formats. There we go. Wipe it away. When you get into these larger ones... It's not that it's intimidating. I've been painting for a long time. It's just difficult when you're using so much paint and you know what you normally load on your knife covers X amount of space. And now that the space is three times bigger than what you usually paint on, it makes it a lot, you know, it's hard to adjust. It's hard to adjust. Okay, so I wiped it off. And now what I'm going to do is get all the streaks and everything else out. Blend it with this brush, a nice thick two-inch bristle brush. And then I'm going to continue on the rest of the painting, and I'm going to address the, um, the sky later on. Now I've got two mountain ranges here. I'm going to have one on the right is going to be the closest to us. The one I'm putting in now is going to be further away. This is a mixture of Payne's gray and white. I don't want it to be too light because... It'll not show up with the sky because the sky has that uh, light blue to it in that area, and then a little darker blue around it. So I've got to watch my value here to make sure it's going to still look in the go into the background, but it's not going to disappear completely. I want it to be visible. Now this is a little bit more my speed, you know, the smaller areas with the knife, and I don't know. If I'm going to continue to go in the large format or not, especially this size. They had a special on Blick.com where if I bought two, I got a decent amount off of each one individually. Like, you know, six or eight bucks or something, each one. And then free shipping because of the amount. So I bought two to give it a try, for the month, like I said, for this next show. But um, I'm not sure how it's going to go over at the show. Those are a great place to try and uh, to test out your new things. One of the things that I do love about going to shows, there's many things, but one of them I really like is when you go to a show and there's something new that you wanted to try or experiment with and you're not 100% sure, bring it to the show, put it in a place in your display where it's reasonably prominent and not for the whole you know, two, three, four days, whatever the show is, but just for a little bit and see what kind of reactions you get from people. You know, the reactions you get from total strangers is the best indicator of if you're on the right track, if you're totally off base, whatever the case may be. So that's what I'm going to do with this one and the one I did yesterday. 
I'm going to put those in two nice positions um, in the beginning of the show. And then I'm going to see what the response is. And then depending on the response, we'll determine, you know, if I continue um, using something this large or if I continue with the smaller stuff like I am, uh, like I've been doing for most of my art career. So now is the next question that I think you're going to ask. If that's the case, why did you go so big? If that's been your comfort zone for so long? And the and simple answer is, I wanted to try something new. One of the things in art that I've learned a long time ago is you have to push yourself constantly and get out of your comfort zone. This is way, way, way out of my comfort zone. So basically, I'm just taking a shot in the dark, seeing one, if it's fun, two, if I can do it and have it look pretty good, and then three, if it's something that you know my clients like or do they prefer the uh, smaller ones that I do. And all of those questions will be answered at the end of August. Bucktown is supposed to have approximately thirty to 40,000 people show up for those two days. That's more than enough people to give it an idea if it's something that... Um, I'm on the right track with or if I'm not on the right track with. So I apologize for a lag in between the last video I just published Sunday, July 3rd, and the one before that was about a month. I um, Spring, summer, and fall is show season, and I had a lot of prep. I've got new displays this year that I'm using for the first time. And a couple of other new things, a new trailer that I had to get for this displays. So things have been crazy because my wife and I do a lot of shows, but we still work full-time jobs too. So I've had, um, it's been a bit crazy. But we got a break now where I just had a show in Naperville, Illinois uh, last weekend, the last weekend of June. And now my next one is until the last weekend of August. And then I've got one two weeks after that in LaGrange, Illinois. And then in the beginning of November, my wife and I have a big four-day show in Omaha, Nebraska. And then she has one in December, and then that'll be it for 2022. So if you ever want uh, me to do any videos on my shows, as far as how I prepare or where I'm going and, you know, what to do for a show, let me know. You know, some people might be interested in that, some might not. You know, leave me a comment and say, hey, yeah, I'd like to hear about what you're doing with shows, how they go, what they are, whatever the case may be. Or I could care less, you know, whatever you want, let me know. Because um, I can take some videos at the shows of our uh, setup. The new displays I have are uh, pro panels, which, oh my goodness, they're awesome. I absolutely love them. The uh, Naperville show I just did was the first time I used them. And um, I just got them this year, and I absolutely love them. I was using the Flourish mesh panels, which are really nice. They're professional and everything else, but my work just didn't look the way I wanted it to on it. And uh, these pro panels, I finally got the look that for the display that I've been kind of searching for for years. The only problem with the pro panels is they are very expensive. They're not uh, inexpensive. So, and the other part is, too, they're very large. Mine, um, I didn't get the knockdown, I think they call them, where it comes in, like, pieces. I um, got the seven-foot regular ones, the original pro panel, seven-foot. And then with the frame and everything else, it's like 84 inches. So it wouldn't fit in my car. That's why I um, bought a little 5x8 trailer to pull behind my Subaru. So we'll see how that goes. Pulling the trailer is no big deal, but backing it up is still something I'm learning. I've never had a trailer before, so backing that little 5x8 is a little tougher than I expected. So Now that, I'm not going to do a video and show you how bad I back it up. Maybe once I get better at it. Okay, now I've got my forward mountain. Now, if you noticed, the one that I have on the left is in the distance. And I kind of left it a little marbled, but I didn't add any highlights like I'm doing to this one. And that's how I wanted to push it back. And that's one of the things that you look at when you're painting. Is when you want something further in the background, you make the color less intense and you have less details. So in this case, the darker, richer color of the mountain on the right brings it forward. And then I'm also doing highlights, which will also bring it forward. And the other one I'm keeping 
I don't want to say drab, but it's going to be, you know, less intense and less detail. And then that's how you get your depth in your painting. And it's not just mountains, it's whatever, whether it's trees, you know, part of water, people, you know, people way in the distance are going to be, you know, silhouettes, where if you do people you know, in a scene and up front, it's going to be, um, you know, a lot more detail with their face or maybe their clothes or whatever. Okay, now there's that little piece of land that you can see right between the two ranges. And I'm putting in this nice light background, well, not background, but base layer with a little bit of ochre. I'm going to add a little blue to it, and then I'm going to knock off, uh, finish it off with a little bit of green. And basically what I want to do is just make it nice and grassy looking, but not as intense as the green that's on the right. Because, again, it's in the background. Now, it's going to be closer than that distant left mountain, it's, but it's still going to be further back than the one here on the right. Now, you may be asking, why am I putting blue on there? And just French ultramarine, too. Simple. Blue is a color that you use to make something go back. Blue is a primary color, and that particular primary um, pushes stuff backwards. So now what I'm doing is lifting it up for a distant tree line. Okay, now I'm spreading out, basically um, anchoring the trees down. Okay, and then I'm going to start, I hope you can see it, but I'm going to use a little bit of brown, actually in this case burnt umber, and green, and I'm making the trees now the trunks for distant trees. And I'm not going to have leaves on them because, like I said, they're in the distance. The leaves are going to be like the impression of where the blue is. So you've got the blue silhouette, let's say. That's going to be the impression of distant leaves, foliage, okay? And then as I put in the trunks that I'm doing now, okay, that's going to kind of tie everything together. But they're not going to be details they're just going to be suggestions of stuff. And that's how you get the depth. Now, if you look at that distant mountain on the left, it looks like it's way back there. You can barely see it. You know, you see enough of the tops of it and the peak, but you don't see, you know, it doesn't stand out and want to shake your hand and greet you. It's just kind of out there. And that's how you bring stuff in the distance. Now, this foreground was a challenge, mid-ground and foreground. One, doing a waterfall with a palette knife is not fun. I hope one day I can learn how to do it to where it is fun. At the moment, it's... I've, if you'll notice, I have to um, wipe it off and start over again a couple of times. And that's mainly because doing the water, it just doesn't have the same effect doing a waterfall as it does with a brush. Part of what I screwed up on, too, is I didn't make this part, which is part of the waterfall, dark enough, I don't think. I mixed up burnt umber and black, thinking I'd get it dark enough, but I didn't. And that is part of what threw it off. But the other part of it was just trying to get the water look falling off the blade. And that was not fun. Most of this painting was fun, but that uh, waterfall itself was a bit frustrating. The rest of it was pretty good. Sky was a little bit frustrating, but overall I was happy with it when uh, I finished it. Speaking of the sky, you see the way it looks now after I wiped it off. And it's got the colors that I want in the sky. And now I'm just going to add clouds, not now, but at the end of the painting. I'm going to add some clouds and then I'm going to brush them off a little bit to kind of take some of the hard edges and stuff off of them. And then the sky is going to come out real nice. But that's a good background that I have now. So never be afraid when there's an area you don't like or it's just not working out. Never be afraid to wipe it off and start over. One of the beauties of oil painting, and it's got many beauties, is you can start over again. Not completely from you know the white of the canvas, or in this case the canvas panel, but you can start over. And it really helps to be able to correct mistakes as you go. And one of the things that I do with my videos, you know, if any of you have seen more than one, 
I never edit out any mistakes. And the reason I don't edit out mistakes is I don't want to give anybody the false idea that once you learn how to paint, you never make a mistake. I've been painting for a lot of years. I sell my work at shows and online and I'm doing very well and everything else. And I make mistakes on almost every painting. I Actually, I can't remember a painting I went through from start to finish where there wasn't something I did where I had to, you know, correct it. Sometimes it's, you know, minor, and the more experience you have, the more it'll be minor than major as far as a mistake goes. But it's still going to be there. Painting is not an exact science. And especially when you're starting to get into the real big stuff, it's funny because the bigger the painting, the tougher it is to, um, to hide mistakes. And that's because everything is so large. You know, there's nothing subtle to it. You know, a painting that's two feet by three feet is pretty much in your face. So, now here begins my trials and tribulations with this waterfall, which I cursed at a few times while I was doing it. I ended up getting a waterfall that I liked, but boy, it took a while to get there. And it still wasn't exactly what I wanted, but... It was still something I thought, okay, I can deal with that. And part of it, too, is it helped when I got the rest of the panel painted around it. And it kind of gave it its boundary, so that helped a little bit. But like I said, it's so easy to do a really nice-looking waterfall with a brush just to drop it down. But with a knife, it's a lot more uh, challenging. And that's one of the things with the knife that I haven't gotten consistent with yet a lot of things i've been doing with the knife that i pretty consistent with but the waterfall is still um something i gotta have to figure out what i'm gonna do with okay i'm gonna take a breath now and slow down my talking and i would like i've got 266 subscribers and i've been getting some decent views so i would appreciate it if you would do me a favor and comment on what it is about my videos you'd like and what you don't like. I'm 56 years old, so I can handle criticism very well. And another thing is, let me know if you like voiceovers, if you like it in real time, or if you like it just sped up with music on it. You know, I've got all of them on my channel, not knowing what people may or may not like. You know, videos that I watch, because I would I watch a lot of painting videos on uh, YouTube as it is. You know, some of them I watch have no, no sound at all. Some have music, some have um, the voiceover, and some are live, you know, where they just do it, you know, real time. So let me know what you prefer, and, you know, I can adjust accordingly. You know, if my voice is annoying and you just want music, just let me know. You're not going to insult me. My wife tells me that all the time. And then uh, the other thing is, too, let me know what size you like paintings and I'll do more videos on sizes you know that you like a lot of people when they first start out painting they're not going to grab a 24 by 36 and say here's my first painting you know a lot of people are going to start smaller than that so just let me know I am always open for con um, constructive criticism and the fact of the matter is as an artist that's the only way you grow is if you know you take what people say that is negative about your work and then you learn from it. And that's what I try to do every day. Okay, so here's the first part. I don't have a cat. Otherwise, at this point in time, I'd be kicking that cat. And I love cats, so don't be calling Cruel Animal Association on me. It's just a figure of speech. And here I'm trying to get the water a little more believable on the top as far as the width. And that's why I'm putting in a little bit extra ground here. You're going to see me fiddle with this for a little while before I finally get it the way I kind of want it. I hope everybody had a really nice and safe 4th of July. Mine was relaxing depressing on the news so I stopped watching the news and there we go scraping it off and saying you son of a rah 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 gotta start over 
So I'm putting a little bit more ultramarine blue in. I had a little too much brown in the water and that just didn't look right. Not for a waterfall. There are a lot of brown streams and rivers and stuff. Not, you're not going to find many of those in the mountains. Now, I haven't been to every mountain range in the world, especially in not everyone in the U.S. At one time, I was, um, I went, the last vacation I took with my brother actually was to uh, Glacier National Park, and we drove. And once we got out of Billings, Montana, you know, that's when the mountain ranges started. And there was a lot of little cutoffs in the uh, highways you take that you can just pull over and check it out. And I didn't see any brown water. Okay, I'm sure that exists, but most of it is, you know, blues with some greens in it and even some turquoise in some of those waters. And um, the brown was just a little too much. Now, in Illinois, where I'm from, you do get a lot of stagnant brown water because of the, um, the, um, the riverbed and the shoreline is a lot more dirt and silt, where in out west and then in Glacier National Park and stuff, it's um, lined with rocks all over the place. And rocks is supposed to be a phenomenal uh, natural filter for water where silt and mud isn't. So our water is still clean here, like in some of the forest preserves. It's just, you know, the color isn't appealing as it would be to a place like in Colorado or Montana or Utah or someplace like that. And the other thing is, too, if you notice, I don't really paint water the way it actually looks. I paint water the way I see it in my head. And I always see it as blue and refreshing, even though many places it's not blue at all. But that's my artistic license, and that's what I am. I love painting water, and I paint it in the relaxing way that I always imagine it in my mind. And that's why my water looks the way it does. You know, when I was a child, you learn the water's blue, the sky is blue, and water part anyways, that's kind of what I do. Now, there are times where I'll put other colors in it for the surrounding. If it's a body of water that's not moving, this one obviously is a river at the bottom of a falls and only a part of one, so it's not really going to be able to reflect a lot of stuff because it's, you know, faster moving water. But there are times when I'll do something that's a little more slow moving or maybe stagnant and then I'll reflect some of the um, surrounding colors in it but most of the time I just like that blue refreshing look to water and I go from there now this part also was a bit of a challenge and this is highlighting in a way that I like now the little peaks above the river are no problem that just like you do with the mountains except they're just smaller same thing with the little peaks and stuff that I'm doing right now at the base of the uh, river. And um, it just makes it to where, you know, you just use a little, in this case, it's a little white with uh, yellow ochre. And that's what my highlight color is. I'm going to use that same color with a little bit of alizarin crimson for the cliffs um, on that uh, big rock formation on the left. And then I'm going to put eventually, you know, different colored um, deciduous trees up alongside the um, wall here that I'm painting now. And that actually turned out pretty good when uh, I finished it. I wasn't sure as I was going, and then as it was being completed, I was a lot uh, happier with it than I thought I was going to be. Now this side, I'm not going to go all the way brown to the bottom. Umber, actually, and uh, black. No, I'm sorry. Umber and Payne's Gray. My apologies. I didn't use black at all today. It was Payne's Gray was the uh, dark color I used. I'm going to put a little bit of grass in here. And there it is. That is sap green and lemon yellow. And today I am using the Williamsburg, Williamsburg forgive me, handmade uh, oil paints. It's one that I tried, oh, several months ago. It's a really nice oil paint. Um, it's professional. It's a tier one paint. It's a little pricey, um, but it is a very good paint. It's, some of the colors take a little bit longer to dry, but um, it's a really well-made paint. I don't know if it's you know what I'm going to end up using the rest of my art career. I have no idea. 
There's, uh, there are many good brands out there. One of my favorite ones that I paint with when I use a brush right now, and actually the only paint I'm using when I use a brush, is my Daniel Smith Water Mixable Oils. I've had a couple of videos with those that I've done, and i got a couple more videos um, in my head that I'm going to be doing here in the next week or so with uh, just a brush with the Daniel, uh, Daniel Smith Water Mixables. And then I also like to use the uh, Windsor Newton um, Griffin Elkid is the name. It's a fast-drying original, um, original oil paint. And that I like doing with a palette knife because it dries a lot quicker than regular everyday oil paint. It is a genuine oil color, but and it's an artist quality too because of the uh, pigment load and the light fastness that Windsor Newton puts on it. But... Um, what I'm doing is, depending on what I'm doing for the application, if it's thicker, I'm going to use the um, Griffin. And if it's a brush, then I'm going to use the Daniel Smith Water Mixable. And I'm using this, the uh, Williamsburg Handmade today. And I'm doing that just because I'm using the paint. I'm going to get my uh, studio completely 100% away from solvents. Uh, when you use a palette knife exclusively, you don't use solvents of any kind. You can use mediums, and I do on the, uh, to the right, I'm going to put um, a forest. So you're not going to see it, but I do actually put a little bit of walnut elkin medium um, to help the paint flow. And that's from M. Graham, and that's also non-toxic non and non-flammable. But um, I'm done with petroleum products in my studio. And when you use a palette knife and you don't have to clean your brushes because there are no brushes you're using, then um, you don't have to worry about, you know, how you clean it and stuff. Now, the couple brushes that you saw me use, um, I'm learning or trying, I should say, from another YouTube artist, um, Stuart Davies. Stuart Davies is a brilliant artist. He does a lot of tonalism and very large format, actually. He does stuff a lot bigger than this. And he uses uh, conventional oil paints, but he doesn't use solvents and stuff. And uh, what he does is he just soaks them in detergent. So when I was done with this painting, that's what I tried. So I'm going to soak them in detergent overnight and then see if I can just clean the rest of them, clean it the rest of the way with uh, soap and water. I only used two brushes, a three-inch and a two-inch bristle brush because everything else was a palette knife. So I'm going to see how that works. I'm, uh, like I said, they're soaking as we speak as I'm doing the voiceover for this. So tomorrow when I get home from uh, my job, my day job, then I will um, take them out of there, run them under some mild soap and water, and uh, see how that works. But Stuart Davies, um, he swears by it, so I'm going to give it a try. Okay, this painting is starting to come together. It's a little rougher than what I usually do, some of them you've seen, and not as rough as a couple others. With a knife, you can kind of do either or. You can make it reasonably smooth, or you can go as rough as you want. I've got, I think, one painting in particular that's much rougher than this. It's very thick. I didn't scrape anything off or wipe anything off. I just really layered it heavy with the knife. And that was an experiment also to just see you know, what it can do and what it would look like after it was completely dry and stuff. And uh, and that's what I mean by pushing yourself. You know, I don't care what it is you're doing. If you want to get better at it, you need to push yourself and go outside of your comfort zone. Uh, painting for me, my comfort zone is size. I'm much more comfortable and relaxed doing a 12 by 16 eighth inch um, Ampersand wood panel. That is my wheelhouse. 12 by 16, 11 by 14, 9 by 12, now we're talking. 16 by 20, 14 by 18, it's okay, but it's a little bit like, okay, I got to make a couple adjustments. This big monster that you're looking at now, you know, I wasn't, you know, having, you know, a panic attack or nothing like that. But it was like, okay, now what the hell do I do? And uh, like I said, the other thing is too, you got to get used to, is the amount of paint you put on your knife is only so much. 
you know, you can't really overload it. And a brush either. You know, you can put more on, but, you know, it's the more paint you put on, the tougher it is to control it. So my advice to anybody is don't be afraid to fail. And I have that on my business cards, actually. Never be afraid to fail. And the reason I say that, and I mean this sincerely, is by doing stuff that's out of your comfort zone and failing at it, that is our greatest teacher. You know, there's a lot of stuff. Now, this painting ends up being a pretty good painting that I like. And I'll have no problem putting it up for sale at the uh, Bucktown uh, Art Show, Art Fair, in uh, the end of August. But there's a lot of things that I learned on this painting. And there I am, not liking the way that looked, and I'm wiping it off. You can see how thick it is. And uh, you learn from your failures as an artist, whether it's painting or a musician or drawing, whatever the case may be. And as long as you're not afraid to fail, that's where you're going to grow as an artist the most and the quickest, I found. So push yourself. You know, if I ruined this painting, okay, and it looked terrible, it's oil paint, okay? I can take an hour, scrape it off with a knife, and then use the uh, shop towel and wipe the whole thing down. And then I'm going to have a stained um, canvas panel, which is absolutely no big deal because oil paint is an opaque medium. When you're using white on it, it's not transparent. It's going to cover it completely. So you let it dry. After, you know, the, it'll only have a real thin, thin, thin layer down after you wipe it off. You let it dry for, you know, three, four weeks. You don't probably don't have to go that far, but just to be safe, three, four weeks. And then start over another painting. So you've lost nothing except a little paint that you squirted out. So there is no disaster if you try something new and it doesn't work. That's how you learn. And the other thing is, too, even if it doesn't work, you may think to yourself, wait a minute, this is going to look cool if I can get the hang of it. And then you just start practicing. You know, you can buy the real cheap um, canvas at Hobby Lobby or Michael's, you know, those like eight and ten packs. And you can use that as your exp uh, experimenting stuff. And once it starts getting where you want it, then you put it on your, uh, you know, wood panel or your nice, you know, Dick Blick canvas or whatever it is that you uh, like to use. But never, ever, ever be afraid to fail. There is no catastrophe here. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You just wipe it off, let it dry, and start over again the next time. And really, it is that simple. And if you don't like something, don't be afraid to alter it. You know, you've seen me now twice. The sky in that big mid-ground to the right. Not like what I did. And what did I do? I wiped it off and adjusted. Never, ever be afraid to do that. And another thing that I found a lot of people do, because I do teach... Uh, in my uh, studio at home at times. And one of the things that is very difficult for me to try to break um, attitude-wise on some of the students is expectations. And their expectation that they're going to have a masterpiece here their first or second time out of the gate. And that's just not the case. Painting... never was able to learn a musical instrument. I never had any talent at it. And I did try a little bit um, years ago when I was younger. And I found out when you're learning how to play a musical instrument, it is really going to sound terrible until you get better. I never really got better. But I have relatives that have. So their stuff when they first start out was noise. And then it turns out to be, wow, you're really good. Well, painting is no different. Your paintings out of the gate are going to look bad. That's not a bad thing. It's just a fact of life. You start out where it looks, Eesh. and then the more you do it, the better it gets. And what helps with something like painting, a musical instrument, whatever, is the more you do it, the quicker you become good at it. So if you paint two hours a week, 
you're going to improve at X rate. And if you paint four hours a week, that rate will be accelerated and so on. So the more you do it, the better you're going to get and the quicker you're going to get at it. Now, as long as you do it, you're going to get better. It's just the time frame. If you want to take 20 years to get really good or if you want to take, you know, two years to get really good. It's all, you get what you put into it. So if you are starting out painting, please do not expect to be Rembrandt out of the gate. Just relax and have fun with it. And I've said this before. If you're painting and you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. You should not stress about painting. Now, I know I told you that, you know, me being doing these big canvases was a little frustrating because I've never done it before and they can be a little intimidating. I still, other than the waterfall, I had fun. The waterfall, I ended up having fun, but for the first three quarters of it, I wasn't having fun. And then I kind of stepped back, took a drink of lemonade and said, okay, I'm going to have fun regardless. And then the waterfall ended up turning out pretty good. It's not exactly how I like it, but it's definitely believable and something I like. And then the other thing is, relax. Understand that you're not going to look like, you know, the reincarnation of Leonardo da Vinci. And understand, it's just going to take time. Now, if you like this video, and I hope you do, or any of my other ones, please consider subscribing to my channel. And like I said, I really would appreciate it if you would just leave me comments and tell me. You know, don't leave me a thumbs down and leave it at that. If you're going to give me a thumbs down, that's cool. You're entitled. But I'm asking you, if you're going to leave a thumbs down, tell me why. A thumbs down doesn't tell me anything. You didn't like it. Okay. Why didn't you like it? That's what I need to know. Because that's how I learn. You know, I've got a lot of people out there that I don't know. And you're watching my videos. And... I need to know what you do and do not like. And that's how I can improve my channel and my painting, quite frankly. You know, going by, you know, the suggestions and stuff of other people. You learn the most from, you know, total strangers because there's no bias. You know, they're not worried about hurting your feelings. So if you're going to leave a, a thumbs down, that's cool. Like I said, I'm just asking that if you leave a thumbs down, tell me why. So then I can figure out how to improve on that. And if you're going to leave me a thumbs up, tell me why you like it. You know, I understand it takes time and everything else, and everybody's got a really hectic, busy life. I get it. You know, I'm the same way, so it's difficult at times. But if you think about it, you know, shoot me a little few words and say, hey, this was terrible because, or this was, you know, this was pretty decent because, and then go from there. And in return, I will try to take your advice and uh, improve my videos. And one of the big ones that I, I asked you about in the beginning was, tell me if you like voiceover. Tell me if you prefer music or if you want um, real time where I'm talking to you as I paint. You know, my voice I don't think is annoying, but maybe it is to some people. I don't know. I'm still married to my wife after 21 years, so she's either deaf or she ignores me or my voice isn't annoying. So you take your pick which one it is. But um, the videos that I make, I do for fun because I enjoy it and I want to help people to learn how to paint. Whether it's to develop it into just a hobby you have fun with or maybe you develop it into something that you can make a few bucks with or even do it for a living one day. But they're a lot of fun and I enjoy doing it. And the interaction from the comments that I do get are a lot of fun. I love responding to comments and stuff. But like I said, making videos is no different than making a painting. You know, you're going to get better the more you do it. But I just need people to let me know in which direction you'd like me to take the videos. Do you want to see the big formats like this? Do you want to see smaller? Do you want to see, you know, real time? Do you want to see it accelerated? So like I said... If you like it, consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit that bell. I try to go once a week, every Tuesday or Wednesday. And uh, once show season is over, that'll definitely be the case. I hope you don't mind my uh, finger right there in front of the lens. I know that's something I definitely need to improve on. 
But I hope everybody had a great 4th of July and a safe one. And I look forward to hearing from everybody. You have a great day.